impediment for my speech. That they may understand what I have to say. Now I have more need for such a prayer than Moses. Because I am here in the midst of Africanism, in the holiest of holy of your educational institution, mostly among Africaners, speaking a far more foreign language than the professor was speaking. See, English and Africans are not as far apart as my mother tongue, Gujarati and English. You'll agree. So English is more foreign to me than English is to the professor. Then there are other barriers in communication. Psychological, religious background, indoctrination. You see, we are all indoctrinated. We are all brainwashed. All of us. We are susceptible to that. And now, with our brainwashing, somebody comes along from the opposite camp, is trying to steal your loyalty, trying to take you away from your preconceived notion. It's difficult. It's difficult. What is immediately worked up emotionally is tight. So my difficulties are far greater than what Moses had. So I ask the Almighty that He may give me the ability to convey to you my feelings and my faith. The subject is Islam and Christianity. This word Islam, where does it come from? It comes from the Arabic word Salam. Hebrew, Shalom, meaning peace. We Muslims, when we meet one another, we always wish one another As-salamu alaykum, peace be unto you. And the here replies, wa alaykum as -salam, and on you also be peace. Exactly as Jesus Christ, when he returned to that upper room, he wished his disciples freedom for yellow. Hebrew, shalom alaykum. In Arabic, salam alaykum. So with that salutation, I begin my talk. I say to you, As-salamu alaykum. Peace be to you all. So this word Islam comes from the word Salam. And this term Islam is given to this faith in the Quran. It is not a concoction of man. The Muslims, they didn't concoct the term because they liked it. In the Holy Quran we are told, in chapter 3 verse 19, it says, Inna dina in the Allah Islam, most certainly the religion acceptable to God is Islam. Islam in its religious definition means a religion of total submission to the will of God. That is Islam. And every prophet, every prophet was a Muslim and their religion was Islam. The religion of Moses. You ask any student of theology, say, what was the religion preached by Moses? He will respond readily, he said, Judaism. I am asking, learn the Jews, rabbis. Where did you get this word Judaism from? Is it in your Torah? He says, no. Is it in your Talmud? He says, no. Is it in your Mishnah? He says, no. So where did you get it? This term Judaism, where did you get this word Judaism from? It's not in your books of authority, not in the Bible. His so-called Tara, Mesna, Talmud, nowhere. How did you get it? I said, you see, the Jews, when they conquered Palestine, Palestine was divided among the tribes. And that part of land in Palestine, which was occupied by the children of Judah, was called Judea. And the people from the outside, they said that the religion of the children of Judah in Judea is Judaism. And they liked the term and they adopted it. But the religion of Moses, according to the teachings of Islam, was Islam. Because the definition of the term is a religion of open submission to God's will. If we can meet Moses, at any time in the hereafter, and we can question him if he gives us that liberty. He said, Oh Moses, what is your religion? We do not expect him to say Judaism, because it's a term which he never heard. In his life he never heard the term Judaism. It was not invented. 
during his lifetime. I expect him to say that my religion is a religion of total submission to God's will. And one word for that in the Arabic language is Islam. Christianity, Professor, I message you. Where did the word Christianity come from? Is it in the Good News Bible? In the Roman Catholic Bible? Any Bible? You students of theology, you know better. It is non-existent. The word Christianity is not existent in any Bible of the world. You have a dozen different Bibles. Nowhere you will find the word Christianity. If Jesus was alive, or in the second family, if we have the privilege of questioning him, Oh Jesus, what is your religion? I do not expect him to say Christianity. Because if he said Christianity, I would ask him further questions. I said, what church you belong to, sir? Are you a Hindu cult? Are you a Jehovah's Witness? Are you a Seventh-day Adventist? Are you a Roman Catholic? Are you a Presbyterian? Are you a Lutheran? Are you a Methodist? What are you? Ridiculous, you say. Ridiculous. Of course, it's ridiculous. I expect him to say that my religion is a religion of global submission to God's will. One word for that in the Arabic language is Islam. Islam. That. And Jesus was a Muslim, Moses was a Muslim, all true prophets of God were Muslims, meaning those who submitted their wills to the will of God. Like Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, we are told that he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. He said, Oh my heart, if it be possible, let this stuff pass away from me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. Not as I will, but as thou will. One word for that, not as I will, but as thou will, is a Muslim, that I am a Muslim. I have submitted my will to your will, O Lord. So Jesus was a Muslim and his religion was Islam. Moses was a Muslim and his religion was Islam. And in the fundamental of the teachings of Moses, Jesus and Muhammad, there is not an iota of difference. Believe me, you have question time. I can spare my 10 minutes and more as the professor had done. I'm also prepared to do that. I'd like to give you that opportunity. I said in the fundamentals of the teachings of Moses, Jesus and Muhammad, there is not an iota of difference. The first commandment as given by God Almighty with the Holy Prophet Moses in the Hebrew language. I was trying to ask the professor you know about Hebrew and Arabic. So I was sharing with him this fact that I've been asking the Jewish people when I meet them. I said, you know the first commandment in Hebrew? The man generally says, my wife knows it. I said, no, no, I don't know whether you know it. <laughs> so I said, and I said, the first is in Hebrew, Shama Israel Adonai Elohim Adonai Echad, which translated is, Hear O Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. Some 1300 years after Moses, a learned man of the Jew comes to Jesus, according to the Gospel of St. Mark, and says, Master, in the Hebrew language, the rabbi, learned man, Dumini, Master, what commandment is the first of all? And Jesus answers and says that to him, the first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. But in his mother tongue he said, Shama Israel Adonai Elohim Adonai Echad. He repeated word for word what was given by Moses 1300 years before without the change of a dot. Saying that in the fundam fundamental of faith there is no change. Saying, <coughs> some 600 years later, a Christian deputation comes to Muhammad in Medina and they have a dialogue for three days and three nights. During the course of the dialogue, the spokesman for the Christian poses the question, among so many other things. So, all right now, tell us, O Muhammad, what is your concept of God? Muhammad is going to say, as recorded in the 112th chapter of the Holy Quran, Qul Allahu Ahad, say, He is Allah, the one and only. He said, Ahad, Jesus said, Ahad, Muhammad, Moses said, Ahad. What's the difference? Actually, it's the same word meaning 